That's right, more fun stuff with matrices. Today we're going to look at matrix multiplication. Now, for my students in the past, this was actually a very challenging topic. I remember the first few years I taught matrices uh, when we were multiplying, and it was very confusing. I think now I've got this figured out and how to help kids the most, so uh, we'll see how this goes today. So the first thing to look at is I want you to remember how to work with dimensions because if you don't know how to do dimensions of matrices, there's no way you're going to be able to multiply them. So remember this thing, what is the dimensions? Remember rows are first of this. And you should have come up with that this is a two by three matrix. And that's how we would write that out. Two rows and three columns, one, two, three. So the reason that the dimensions are so important are because they help us know whether or not we can multiply them. So as you're filling in the blanks on your notes, what we want to look at is the dimensions of the matrices that we're multiplying. And you have to look at the columns of the first matrix. So what I've done here is underneath this matrix A, I wrote a, put in a little N. That is the columns of the first matrix, and it must match the rows of the second matrix. So I put another little N there, meaning that those two variables, N and N, those numbers must be identical. So the columns of the first matrix and the rows of the second matrix must be the same. The way I think about this is I always write out the dimensions underneath the matrix and then think that the inside numbers must be the same. There and there must be identical. Once you have that done, that just tells you that you are allowed to multiply them. If they're not the same, you cannot multiply these matrices. At that point, we go to the next step, and that is that we can figure out the dimensions of the answer. I don't know what this matrix C is, I'm completely unaware of, of what the answer is, but I do know what the dimensions are. And the dimensions are the same as the outside of the matrices you were multiplying. So that means the rows of the first matrix and the columns of the second matrix, the numbers there, that's the dimensions of the answer. So the outside dimensions of the two you're multiplying are the dimensions of your answer. That seems pretty confusing, but after you do a few of these, it'll start to, uh, to come along pretty easily. So then the last step is to calculate each individual element of your answer. So you'll have your dimensions of the answer. You'll know how many elements are there. And then let's say we want to figure out the element of matrix C, and we're going to say C13. That means it's in row 1, column 3. That would mean you take row 1 of the first matrix that you were multiplying, and you take column 3 of the second matrix you were multiplying, and you match them up. Now this step 3 here is probably not going to make much sense at all to you. So what I'd like you to do is we'll go through an example, and then I'll try to remind you to come back and reread this, then it will make more sense. And usually that's kind of how it is, things that are new. Until you've actually done it, it's kind of hard to understand what it is that these instructions mean. So we'll come back to this. So here we're looking at, for this practice, we're looking at strictly the dimensions. So the dimension of matrix A and the dimensions of matrix B are listed. If we multiply A and B together and get the product of that would be C, then what are the dimensions of the answer? Well, if this is a 3 by 4 and a 4 by 5, can we multiply them? We look here at the middle. Yes, you can, because those are the same. And the answer, then, is the outside. So the dimensions to, ans to um, matrix C would be a 3 by 5. Number 2, can we multiply these, A times B? Yes, because the middle numbers are the same, the 2 and the 2. So our answer would be the dimensions of the outside. So the dimensions of matrix C, when, when we multiply A and B, will be a 1 by 7. Number 3, we check the inside, so we say here's a 3 and there's a 4. Huh, those numbers do not match up, therefore we cannot multiply matrix A and B together. It's not possible. And so what we would say is that this is just undefined. Something like undefined or not possible, and then we're done. There's nothing else to do because you cannot multiply them. And then the last one, we have a 1 by 13 and a 13 by 1. When we multiply those together, it is possible because those middle numbers are the same. The columns of the first matrix, rows of the second matrix. And then our answer would be the rows of the first and the columns of the second. So this is just a one by one matrix. A one by one matrix, remember, is just, it would just be one number. So I'm, I'll put a question mark there. That's what it would look like. Okay, so that's how you check to see whether or not you can multiply them and figuring out the dimensions, which is extremely important. 
Here's number five. Now on your notes you already have the written out frame of it. I didn't put this on here yet because I wanted you to, to do this underneath the problem. So what are the dimensions of this first one? This is a three by two matrix. Three rows, two columns. This one here is a two by two matrix. Two rows, two columns. Therefore we can check that the middle numbers are the same and then the answer will be a three by two matrix. And so what I've done, I tried to already put in what the matrix would look like, three by two. So for these problems, then you'll actually want to write out the framing of what your matrix would look like, a C11, a C12, all this stuff. This seems like a lot of work, which it is, um, but this is how the best way I have found that students are able to then do this. Okay, let's keep moving here. So, so let's first figure out this first element that's in row one, column one. Now the way we do this is these little one comma one, that actually gives us a hint on how to calculate this element. And so I've tried to color these to give them a little color coordination. Obviously you're not going to be able to change the color on your notes, but just kind of watch this for a second. So we take row one of the first matrix and column one of the second matrix and we match those up. And what I mean by matching them up is we take the first number of each and pair them together. Those are the partners. And then the second number of each and pair them together. So then I've changed the colors here to see if that will help a little bit. So the greens there and then the purples. If you are colorblind, like a good friend of mine, then that doesn't really help you. So I'm talking about we take the one and the one and we'll match those together. We're going to make a, a list here. C1, comma, one is going to equal, and then we have one times one. I've matched up the greens here. I'll circle those again. I just matched those up together. And then we add, now we go to the next numbers, negative one, so go negative one, and excuse my pen for shaking there, that's a negative one, and then a two. Okay, so what does that equal? That will equal one plus negative two. So one minus two is negative one. So C11 equals a negative one. So now I'll come down here to my answer. I'm gonna draw this big enough to have my placeholder. And I figured out that the first number is, in row one, column one, is negative one. Now I go to the next one, C12. And what does that equal? So I take row one, there's my row one. And I take now, because I'm doing C12, I take column two. So I take those numbers and start matching them up. The first numbers match together, one and negative two. So I say one, negative two, plus. Now I take the next numbers. Second number is negative one and the second number in the column is three. So I say negative one and three. I don't know why my negative ones keep doing that. Equals, so I have a negative two minus three, because this was negative one times three, Negative two minus three is negative five. So that was my row one, column two, row one, column two. And now we have to keep doing this for every single one. C, two, one equals row two, column one. Row two, that is going to be my three and my two. And then I'm going to do column one, row two, column one, column one, so I have the first numbers are a three and a one. Those are the first partners that match up. The second numbers are a two and a two. So I say plus two and two equals, and then that is three plus four is seven. So this equals a seven. That was row two, column one, row two, column one. So I would actually like you to uh, pause this video for now and continue and figure out the other three and I'm going to pause my recording and figure it out so that all the answers are just going to pop up here in just a second and then you can see if you did it right. Okay, and this is your answer you should have come up with and that is the other numbers were a 0, then a 10, and then a 15. So you can check your answers here, here, and here if you did not get those numbers to see if you can follow along with what I did. So it's again this is just matching up your rows and your columns with each element and then you add the products. So right at this point, I want to go back and look at number three from above in your notes. So I'm going to scroll back up here. And on our first page, we had this thing here where it said calculate each element in the answer. Now let's reread this and see if it makes sense. If you need to find, 
if you need to find element C13, that's in our answer, then we take row 1 of matrix A, column 3 of matrix B. Each element will have a partner that will multiply together, and then you add these products up. Hopefully that makes much more sense now that you've done this practice, as opposed to when you first read that, that probably didn't make much sense to you at all. All right, let's keep going on. So we are now, we're done with number five. Let's go on to number six. So now that you've had some practice, uh, before you pause the video, I know we've got this little guy, this thinking guy here. Before you pause the video, I want to remind you how you set this up. And that is to think about the dimensions. So the f dimensions of this, this is a one by two. This one is a two by two. Are we allowed to multiply these? Yes, because those middle numbers are the same. So the dimensions are, of our answer will be the outside dimensions, which is a one by two. Now the reason I want you to do that is because then you set up what it's supposed to look like, a one by two. And we go a C and a C. So this is a C1, com, C1 comma one. And this is a C1 comma two. Row one, column one, row one, column two. And now we figure out those elements. Go ahead and pause now and figure out the answer. Okay, and you should have come up with, let's see here, I'm going to run out of room, let's just do it right here. I think you have some room on the side, on the right side of your notes, but I don't have much room on this page. So C11, that means we will take row 1 here. Well, there's only one row on the first one, that makes this easy. The first number is a negative 5 times, so I'm taking this row, and then I match it up with this first column. So negative 5, 2, plus, now the second numbers of each, second number of that row, second number of that column, or two, and then this will equal negative 10 plus 8. Negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. And then we go to the next element, row 1, column 2. Again, row 1 is negative 5. And then now I'm doing this one. So I say that the first number is a 5 plus the second number of each second number of the row, second number of the column, I get a 4 times negative 6. And if you need to show your steps on this, this is fine. This is a negative 25, which I'm going to I'm going to write this out this time so that I don't make some errors. I have a negative 25 plus 4 times negative 6, that's a negative 24, which is a, a negative 49. All right, so the answer then is to this whole problem our first element was a negative 2, and the next element is a negative 49, and there's our answer. All right, two more examples. Number 7. This one we write out again. Actually, why don't you just try the whole thing on your own, and then push, push uh, play to resume. And I'll have the answer up here, so if you get the right answer, then you can just go on. Okay, the answer to this one was negative 16. That's it, the entire matrix was just a negative 16 over here. So how do we get that? Well, the dimensions of this is a one row by three column matrix. This one is a three by one matrix. Therefore, the answer is a one by one matrix. And so when we draw the shape of the matrix, it's just one element, one by one. How do we get that? We take the row 1, this entire row, and then you take the column here and match those up. So since we only have one element, I'm just looking at C1, comma 1, and that's the only element we have, and we take the first number of each, 2 and neg negative 5, and we add the second numbers of each one is a negative 1 and a 6 plus the next, the third number of both row and both column is a 0 and a 3. So this is, let's see here, we get a negative 10. Here we're going to have minus 6. Here we're going to have plus a 0. So our answer is 1 by 1 matrix, negative 16. Okay, to have a little break here, we're going to watch just this fun little video on multiplication in honor of multiplying matrices. All right, you've had a nice little mental break. I do think that's kind of a funny clip there about multiplication. Uh, let's get on to our last example and we'll finish up these notes. So number eight. Now what we're going to do is notice that you have an unknown variable. You have an x 
or not, and a y, an unknown element within these matrices that you're trying to solve for. So in order to know what the, this element here, this x and the y are, we're going to have to set up the, the multiplication for this whole thing. So this x is inside the first matrix, row number 2. This y is inside the second matrix, and it's in column number one. And the reason I'm only talking about this column is because when you're doing the second matrix, you're doing columns when you're multiplying. And when you're taking the first matrix and you're multiplying, you focus on the rows. So we're going to take a row and a column and match them up. And that's how, it and we'll have our answer over here. So let's start off with, uh, how about this? We'll take row number two, negative five and x, and match it up with any of these columns. I would probably not want to match it up with this first column here because we would have a variable in both of them. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So let me take the second, uh, the second column. As we look at this second row of the first matrix, the first element there is going to be negative 5. Then we multiply it by the first element of the second row. And I know this gets confusing. It's going to be negative 5 and 0. So we're just looking at the first element here of this second row, first element of the second column. Now we will add the next elements. So the next element here in that second row is an x, and the next element here in that second column is a negative 5. So then we will have this equal, now think through this, second row, second column. Where's that element? Well, we take the second row here and the second column, and we match it up, and we get this negative 20. So this equals negative 20. Now, this is uh, not the simple part. We just solve this out here. So we get 0. This is going to be a minus 5x, because x times a negative 5. This equals negative 20. Solve for x by dividing both sides by negative 5, and you get a positive 4. So x equals 4, and now we have solved for this element here. Next up is solving for the y. So it doesn't actually matter which row we take now because we know all four elements here. It's, this is no longer a variable. It's, we know what x equals. x is a 4. So we could take the second row, but I'm going to go with the first row just to practice something else. So we take this first row, which is going to be uh, the first element is 1. So we'll take this 1. And now, we're again, we're solving for the y, so we want to take this first column. So 1 times, and then the first element is a y, plus, and now this next element is negative 2, and we take the next element in the column, which is negative 4. Ah, that's a little bit sloppy. Move it down here a little bit so I can have some more room. And go back here. Okay, so this equals, so we're taking row 1, column 1 in this case, Row 1, column 1 is going to match up with this number 9. So this equals 9. And then let's see, we get 1 times y is y, plus negative 2 times negative 8 is positive 8. That equals 9. Subtract 8 from both sides, and we get y equals 1. And there we're done. We know what x equals. x equals 4. Let's box our answers to make it obvious. y equals 1, and that is it. We're at the end of our lesson. So uh, to finish up here, I've just got a nice little clip from The Matrix. You don't have to watch it, but it's kind of fun. Uh, and then you're ready to get going on your practice, and good luck on your mastery check. See you in the next